viewer discretion is advised. What do you feel may have went wrong? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what went wrong. I don't know. Brittany Bournes may say and pretend as if she doesn't have a clue as to where she went wrong. I don't know about the other mishaps and mistakes and blunders and errors that you have made in your life. But when it comes to Malia Davis, this is your biggest mistake. Was hooking up with Darian, Vince. That was your biggest mistake. The other mistake was to leave this person in the care of your daughter. Brenda Bourne said that they have a large, supportive family. And if that is true, why couldn't you get someone from this large supportive family to care for Malia while she went to her father's funeral. I'm just still surprised as to why she would not take her daughter with her to her father's funeral if you have such a large supportive family. I know somebody in that large supportive family has some money. This is Brittany's father, Benjamin. One thing I've noticed about the Bowens is that they, they cannot keep a man. Brittany Bowen seems to be the type of person that is stubborn, hard-headed, and wants to do things her way. And people that exhibit that behavior always make mistakes and always need to be bailed out. I'm too over. I'm overwhelmed. I'm so overwhelmed also. I mean, I can, I will tell you, she's a very brave little girl. Being that, the, is this on? Yeah. Okay, being that the surgery she's had, she is strong. And I know if she's listening to this, I want you to know that Nana loves you. And I promise to take you to Lake Charles. And I still want to do that. I want to fulfill my promise that I told you the other day. And I miss you and I love you. Nana's coming for you. Yes. Well, she has, um, is it cut, I would say, from, like, right around the bone flap area. But she has thick hair, so it's really kind of hard to see. But if you're looking for it, you'll see it. Anything you can do, if you see Malia, please contact the police department. Um, that's why we're here, and we're grateful for all these people that turned out. And this is something that I wouldn't wish on anybody. No, not really. I, I really, I don't. Yeah, if I did, I would say it, trust me. I would say it if I knew something different, but I actually don't. I mean, the search team went out there today. I still don't know what's going on with that. And uh, anyhow, hopefully we'll hear something soon. I know time is at the essence. Why is Charlesville just this area? I'm not sure. Well, I'm not sure. Honestly? There's a lot of things that it's not clear to me. So I can't really speak on what anyone says because I'm really, it's not clear to me what's going on. I don't believe it's going to show support for anybody to help. Can you talk to us about the unit search? Missing. 
nearly two weeks. <laughs> she's been so broken. I do it. My heart feels so broken. And Bowen's ex fiance Darian Vince, is arrested in connection with her daughter's disappearance. He was the last person to see my daughter. I seen you when you came home. You didn't say anything to me. I stood up for you. I wanted to believe your story. Vince's story. She's referring to his claim of being knocked out by kidnappers after he, Malia, and their youngest son were all abducted, he says, and only Malia never made it away from them. I know it didn't make sense. But as a mother, I would rather hear that than to hear that somebody I love killed. But was someone she loved hurting her daughter long before the four-year-old disappeared? According to criminal court records, CPS investigated the family after little Malia suffered a traumatic brain injury so severe she had to have surgery. It's like, what? What do you mean she had an injury? You know, all I know is, is when she fell from the... Do you feel like some things happened inside your home that you didn't protect Malia from? I'm not sure. I was always home. It was at the family's apartment that detectives say surveillance video shows Malia walking in and never coming out. Instead, Vince is seen here coming out with a laundry basket with a trash bag inside. My first thoughts were, we just did laundry. What are you doing with that mask? Investigators have found Malia's blood at the apartment, a place that was once home. But this mother says she realizes it may be the last place her daughter was alive. I stayed there one night, and I laid in her bed. I laid in her bed. As a mother, I want to have hope. That hope is giving me a peace of mind. I have to believe that. But at the same time, I have to be realistic, too, that she could possibly be gone. Bowen says she realizes her daughter may be gone, but she says she's praying one way or the other, Malia will be found. In the newsroom, I'm Donna Lee Keith, Fox 26 News. Again, we thank you for your patience. We, we thank you for uh, coming by. I know how difficult uh, this is. Um, I'd asked you earlier about Malia's birthday, February 6th. Um, Tell me about the day she was born. The day she was born. Um, I had to have a C-section with her. And I just remember being in the hospital by myself. Mm. Other family members not there? or Wow. Do you remember holding her for the first time? And what was that like? Which is... The feeling was amazing because I've always wanted a little girl. I've always wanted a little girl and to know that I finally had her, it meant everything to me. Tell me about Malia. Malia, she was, she was friendly. I mean, she would go up to anybody. I mean, anybody on the street, she would, hey, hi, you know, she she would always speak. And a beautiful little girl, she, she loved to play, you know, with the kids, and she was just a normal child. Mm -hmm. um, she played with her brothers, she got along with them. Um, she loved being a big sister to Cortland, and she was very helpful. She had a favorite color, favorite doll, favorite cartoon. Well, her favorite color was pink. She she wasn't a doll person. She would play with cars, if anything. <laughs> she, she she loved cars. Um, but her favorite uh, cartoon character was Rainbow Dash. And she used to watch My Little Pony all the time. She, would, she wouldn't want, want to watch anything else. And I remember she used to tell me how Rainbow Dash was her best friend. Really? I have a daughter, and My Little Pony was her favorite when she was that age. 
the world has been touched by this story. There's been an outpouring of support and great interest and concern. Why do you think that is? Honestly, I'm not sure why, but I know this kind of spirit that we had. And when I took those pictures, that's exactly what I captured, her spirit. You can tell. It's, it's, it's like you look at something, you, you look at her and it's like you just know what kind of person she was. You can feel that spiritually. Mm -hmm. Everybody has seen this, this photograph. Um, there's something about uh, the gap in the tooth, the floppy hair, that everybody it just grabs them. It is an adorable picture. Did you take this picture? I did. Mm. How old was she when you took that picture? Three. She was three. And where were you? At Galveston. Oh, was Jamaica it? Beach. Jamaica Beach. Did she like the beach? She loved the beach. As a matter of fact, before all of this, I was just talking about bringing her back. We were supposed to go back. Brittany, I know this has been a tough time. Your dad passed away last month. Now your daughter is missing. How are you coping? By the grace of God. I'm coping by the grace of God because honestly, I've been praying to keep my peace, to keep my mind. Are you able to get any sleep? Do you have it's, an appetite? It's hard. And I've been trying to eat. It's, it's hard. It's, it's hard to sleep. I just, it's, it's like my mind and my spirit can't rest. I can't focus. I'm, I can't concentrate on anything. I can't even recall things from the day before. It's hard. Nobody can tell you how to be in a situation like this. I've never been in a situation like this. It's devastating for me. And all I do is pray. That's all I can do. And just give it to God because this situation is, I can't control this. I can't control this. There's nothing I can do. Ever since your daughter was announced missing, there have been stories every day. Do you watch the stories? No. I can't. I don't watch TV. I don't watch the news. Social media? No. Too painful. It is. It is. My friends, they do, but I don't. How's your mom doing? She spoke, the, fir the first time we heard from you, She, I remember her speaking at the uh, news conference. <clears throat> It's like, ever since, I don't know, she, she doesn't want to be in the media, and I'm okay with that. I see. But are you, there's something going on between you two where you, you're not, you're not talking, which seems surprising given what you're going through. You want to talk to your mom. I want to talk to her. It's too much for her. Let's, let's go back <clears throat> to uh, 
to the beginning of this story. Um, you left town to go to your dad's memorial service. It's been reported you had an argument with Darian Vince before you left town. What was that about? I'll speak to that. Okay. I'll speak to that. I'll speak to that. They were having some relationship issues because she discovered that there was issues of infidelity and that he had been entertaining others in a very inappropriate manner when you're in a committed relationship with someone else. And so she didn't confront him about that until she was already gone at the airport. So at the airport, did you call him and talk to him about this? Or he, he took you to the airport? No, my friend took me to the airport. And did you call him? No, I texted him. What did you say? Those text messages have been given to authorities. And so we don't want to rehash that right now mm -hmm. because all of that's going to come out in a trial someday soon. But all of that exchange between the two of them about the infidelity, the inappropriate pictures of a sexual nature that she had discovered him sending to someone else, um, that's going to come out. But all of that was provided after I got involved mm -hmm. to investigators that they needed to see those things. Mm -hmm. Because to me, I believe it spoke to motive, in my opinion, based on what we have learned and what we discovered and what we saw. Those pictures had the potential to expose a hidden secret of his about his sexuality. And once she confronted him with that, while being at the airport, you know, I, I believe that that speaks to the motive behind this entire tragedy of Malia being missing. So, Brittany, let me ask you, when you confronted him by text, how did he respond? He responded in text messages also. Was but he, he kept calling and she wouldn't answer. I see. So, w was he angry? Upset? Upset, not... Yeah. Upset. Not angry. Not angry, but upset that she would not respond, that she wouldn't communicate with him. Mm. Were you comfortable leaving town with your children with Darian Benz? Yes, because in my mind, whatever we had going on had nothing to do with the children. When you came back, We heard the story from Darian about a kidnapping. He was attacked. He and one of the other children were left alone. He goes to the hospital the next day. The story, quite frankly, sounded so far-fetched. A lot of people did not believe it. Did you believe it? I wanted to believe it. Why? Believing that story is, I mean, I would rather hear that somebody took my child than to know that somebody that I had a home with could have possibly did something. And I think it's, I think it cheapens the truth to even call it a story. What we all were told was nothing more than a concocted lie to cover up the real circumstances of the disappearance of Malia. So I don't think that we should give him the benefit of the doubt or even the dignity to call what he said a story. It's a lie. When you got back, he explains what happens. What else did he tell you? When what? I saw him, when he called... When, when you got home. When I got home that yes. Sunday? Yes. He never really said anything to me. He just kept saying, I'm sorry. He said he was sorry. I'm sorry. Did he I tried to protect her. That's all he told me. He didn't really tell me much. The same things that I heard going around this, he didn't tell me anything. So, did you have suspicions about, did you have a bad feeling 
It was always in the back of my mind, yes. What was in the back of your mind? That something could have possibly happened. And that maybe he was involved? Possibly. Did you notice anything different about the apartment? No. Nothing seemed it out was, of place? It, nothing... Everything, everything was cleaned, everything was put away, but that's normal. That's how we clean, you know, and... Um, I didn't realize that the basket was gone until I, I heard about it, until I spoke with the detectives. And when I went home and I noticed the basket was gone, and I don't know, I just, I don't know. I know that my mother had done laundry on the first and he picked it up. Maybe it was there, I don't know, mm -hmm. you know. You came back May 3rd, I believe. So how much longer was Darian there? Because at, one, at some point, police couldn't find him. Was he there for another two days, another three days? Do you remember? I don't understand that question. My, my, my question is, at some point, police said they, could, they tried to find him. So at some point, he obviously left the apartment. Was it after you'd been home for two or three days? When or? when they first released him on that Sunday? I'm sorry. Before I, he was even arrested. I'm before he about. was, okay, on the yeah. third. No, he was supposed to be picking me up on the third. Right. And he never showed up. I waited for him for two hours. Who picked you up at the airport? My mother. And what did she tell you? Did she give you a reason why he wasn't there? No, but she told me that if he were to make it there, then just allow with him. I see. But he never made it. But he never made it. Did you go to your apartment that night? I sure did. And was he there? No. The car wasn't there. Nobody was answering the door, and the light was still on in the uh, dining area. So when did you see him? I see him Sunday. Okay, so that was the next day. Friday was, I mean, the third was Friday. Okay. Yeah, and then we filed the missing persons report that Saturday. Okay. He didn't come into the hospital until later on that night. That night. And the police didn't release him until that Sunday. Did you go to the hospital to see him? We got a phone call. I received a phone call. His brother received a phone call, and my mom received a phone call saying that they were there. And so we all went there, and there were a lot of police officers. Uh huh. Did you have a chance to talk to him then? No. They wouldn't let us. They wouldn't let you talk to him? No. <clears throat> Did he ever come back to the apartment after that? No. Where did he go? He went on Sunday, he came back to my mother's house. To your mother's house? Yes. So why did he not come back to the apartment with you? I didn't go to the apartment. Oh, okay. So I went you... back to where my mother, I didn't. <clears throat> so you were both staying with your mom? Yeah. At a certain point? Okay. A porter's, a porter's left out here. She did go to the apartment straight from the airport, went to the apartment, and he did pick her up. Wouldn't answer the phone, wouldn't keep, she, she could get no communication with him. So she went to the apartment, saw the light was on the apartment. She's bamming on the door, went around to the patio door, bamming on that door, thinking maybe they had car problems or something and they may be in there. Right. Nobody answers. Nobody answers. So she goes back with her mom. Did you not have a key? No, she, no he had the key. they had a spare key in the house and he had the key on the car keys. I see. <clears throat> At what point did you become suspicious of Darian? That maybe he had something to do with Malia's disappearance? When he started hiding from me. Hiding, like, just wouldn't come just, home? Just, no. When um, my suspicion grew Monday after he had been released, mm -hmm. and he did not want to talk. Um, his family wouldn't let me talk to him for whatever reason. So then you were suspicious? Yeah.
this is a man you loved. This is a man you had a child with. Did you think he was ever capable of doing any harm to any of your children? No. Never because thought that. Because that's, that's not what I've seen. To think what this man has done in this case is to see this man as a monster. And she didn't see anything living with him that suggested he was capable of something of this magnitude. Mm -hmm. Even at his worst state that he would do something like this. And so this has been a traumatic, shocking experience for her about a lot of this. You gotta understand a lot of these things that have been coming out now. When I sit with Brittany and told her that the things we had learned and discovered, mm -hmm. the things that my organizational brothers who were out there speaking to tons of people, I was speaking to uh, the stepdad's family, and the things that we had extracted and pulled when I bring, when I brought these things to her, you know, she was it's like shocked. Well, how do you know that? She was like, yeah, that's true. Well, how did you find out that? And I explained to her we had been diligently working on the case. So what did Darian Vince's family tell you about him? What secrets? I have to be careful because I know that this is going to be in a trial at some day, at some point. But what I got from them was their sole concern was the protection of him, not the whereabouts of Malia. Their sole concerns was not to get him to help us find Malia, but it was protecting him. And I said to them, I said, listen, what kind of man is kidnapped? A child that he loves, his stepchild, taken from him. He won't return phone calls. He's participated in no searches. Won't speak to searches. Hiding from police officers. Won't speak to the mother. I said everything he's doing indicates he's guilty of something. And that the story is a lie. And so their concern was to protect their loved one. Their first priority was not, where is Malia, at all. Brittany, have you ever been afraid of Darian Vince? No. Has he ever harmed you in any way? No. Verbally abusive? No. Physically abusive? No. The police have talked about the evidence in the apartment. Bleach blood in the apartment, linked to Malia. Everything seems to point to this man harming your daughter. Are, have you grasped that reality? I'm still processing. still processing that. It's hard for me to think about. So, <clears throat> I, I want to ask you something, because you, you have brought this up in interviews, and this is a touchy subject. Um, you have said in interviews that there was abuse in the home and Brittany was afraid to reveal it because she was afraid. You have put that out there. Let me say this to you. My number one obligation is not to the stepfather, is not to Brittany. My number one obligation is to that beautiful child right there, Malia. Justice for her is the priority. Where she is is the priority. Everybody else are adults. 
they have to stand on their own two feet and answer for whatever they've done. But that child is the priority. Mm. And let me be straight with you. This man has to answer. He has to answer for what happened before she came up missing. He has to answer for that. Because there's a lot more here. His mother had no idea that this child was leaving the house with him in the morning. He's saying, I'm taking the child to daycare. But only later to learn from the investigation from both HPD and us that he was bringing the child back home sometimes with him. What is your purpose to tell this mother while she's going to class or she's going to work? Malia's at daycare. Yeah, I took her to school. But come to find out she's at home with you. Why would you lie and say she's at daycare? but have her in the house with you. The very day that she went to the airport, picked up by her friend, she leaves out the house believing Malia is at the daycare and didn't even know he had snuck her back in the house as she walking out the door. What you doing, brother? What are you doing to this child? Are you saying there was abuse? Hell yeah, I'm saying there's abuse. And I'm and there's a whole lot and more. And you're saying, but and, let me say this. And you're saying that let Brittany, me say Brittany was not aware. Let me say this. I want to be clear. She was not aware of a lot that was going on. You were not aware. But one thing I am going to do, because right now the priority is still finding Malia. Mm. I'm gonna say a lot more before it's over, and I'm gonna point directly to the facts of it. Mm. But I want to first find Malia. We can all understand that. Brittany, you've been talking to police, I understand. How often do you talk to them? Every other day. Every other Whenever day. Whenever they have updates. Uh, have they given you information, new information? No. Any new details? No, I've asked. Are they still questioning you about Darian Vince? They're, they'll ask me questions about information, uh, like his card information or accounts and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Credit card? Okay. So you talk to police every other day. You're still talking to them? Of course. Have you talked to Darian Vince since he was arrested? No. Has he tried to reach out to you? No. Do you plan to visit him? No. You're done? Yes. Darian was arrested, I believe, at his brother's house. Have you talked to his brother? Next question. Have you talked to any of his family members? We have spoken to the brother. Yes. Both of you? And? When that's, and that's how he was really arrested. But we'll talk about that more. But he actually, we have talked with the brother. And that's actually what helped play a role in getting him arrested. Can you say what was said? No, not right now. But I do believe... <clears throat> For a fact, they were helping him hide out. And I do believe that a few of them all know a whole lot more of what really went down with Malia than what they've said. Brittany, I know this is a tough question, but I have to ask. You've been vilified in social media. You've been followed. You've been harassed. People think you are partly to blame for what happened. What do you say to those people? People are entitled to their own opinions. I remember looking at situations and being on the outside looking in. Doing exactly what they're doing to me. I know my truth. And I love my child. And can nobody take that from me. No matter how they feel. I'm not perfect, and I'm not going to sit here and act like I am, and nobody is. How dare you? The family of Malia's father, the Davis family, says you knew what was going on in the home, and you failed to protect your daughter. Move on from that. You can't answer that. No, that goes in the CPS.
We got a lot of questions on Facebook from viewers. People wanted to know why did you leave your kids with Darian Vince when you went to your father's memorial? I didn't pay for my ticket. So my aunt did. So you're saying you couldn't afford to take them with exactly. you? Exactly. Could you not have placed them with other family members? Your mother and aunt? My aunt doesn't live here. What about the Davis family? The Davis family? I mean, Peyton went. Malia could have went too. And why didn't she? They should have asked for her. I didn't even know that they wanted to come get paid. They told me last minute. So when you left, you had no concern that Vince could or would harm your child? No. And you also got to understand, she's dealing with the death of her father. She's dealing with trying to get out of town to get to the services for her father. She's dealing with the stress of all of them trying to raise funds from here to Massachusetts to take care of the services of her father. Mm -hmm. Because that was a test trying, that was a test for the, for the family to get the father buried. So she's going through all of that. And, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. I guarantee you, had she known some of the things that we've later learned, I don't believe this mother would have left that child with him one split second. But a lot of what was going on, she didn't know. Your other children are no longer in your care. Do you think that's fair to you? No. Are you able to talk to them? No. Can't even visit them? Do your other children know that Malia is missing? I don't know. They're staying with other family members, correct? Yeah. And, and you're not allowed to visit them? I can't talk about this. This is all yeah, CPS is related. I don't right. please I don't yeah, want to talk is, about that. But she's had no contact. Mm. All that is CPS related. Yeah, she's had no contact. Just a couple more questions. Um, volunteers have been out looking for your daughter. It doesn't look good. They, they've come up with nothing. Have you accepted the possibility that Malia is no longer alive? Let's move on to the next question. I, I know it's it's tough, but that's that is something you have to live with every day. I, I'm sure you've thought about this. I have thought about it. I don't want to accept it. You don't want to accept it. I think every parent in America would agree with you. We all hope that she is found and that she's okay. But she may not be. She may not. What's next for you? I haven't thought about it. Mm. Are you um, are you working? Are you able to work? Are you? <clears throat> you know everything for her right now is just stuck on where's Malia. Mm -hmm. You know it's kind of hard to talk about where you go from here when she's yet to have closure about where's Malia. Mm -hmm. And until she gets that closure, and until she gets that closure in her life, in her mind, in her heart, about what actually happened to her daughter and where her daughter is, there's never really closure. 
I think the only thing she can do at that point is survive. And that's what she's doing right now, just surviving. Hoping to get some answers about where Malia is. Brittany, I thank you for your time. It was after this video that Quanell X decided to separate from Brittany Barnes. During the interview, Quanell X said that he is not about to, or he is not about helping Brittany or anyone else. What he is about is finding and getting justice for Malia Davis. When he said that, it was over for Brittany Bowen. So let me go over some of the one more time. There is a video camera at the top of the stairwell that a neighbor owns. Police were able to recover the footage of that video. In that video, it shows the stepdad after mother had left the city. It shows the stepdad coming out or walking back into the apartment complex with a big bottle of Clorox that he had just bought. Then it shows him coming out with a bottle of Clorox, a big laundry bag, and a black garbage bag stuffed inside the laundry container that he was carrying out of the home. It was strange when he told the mother he was cleaning the house with Clorox, for there was no reason for him to be cleaning the house with Clorox. They already had a small thing of Clorox in the house. Intensify 
Now, their time for a manhunt. No longer person of interest. This man needs to be captured. He needs to be arrested. Has he tried to contact mom? No. Not at all. When was the last and time they had contact? He won't respond to any of her text messages. He won't respond to any. She's been trying to contact him for days. With zero response. When was their last contact with uh, each other? Last week. It was right when she came home. And shortly after she got back to the city is when he stopped communicating and contacting with the mother. And Brittany, when's the last time you spoke to Maria? Maria? When's the last time you talked to your little girl? Listen, mom is not perfect. She's made some mistakes. But mom um, needs to share this right information. I'll share it with you with law enforcement. We believe it's time for a man on for this time. Okay. Alright. Uh, so when do you plan on sharing these details for today? At least is the same. This story, like every single article had different bits of information. They had the name wrong, the spelling wrong, and, and the ages wrong, and like different it was the craziest thing I've ever dealt with before. Confusing. Yeah, even with me, it was like, how you dare me dad if you're not spelling his name right? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I was so confused about that. And Corby is crazy, man. It, it changes like every five days. Yeah. I was going to ask you, did you hear about the thing where they said that he was dropped off in that same vehicle that he was that was stolen? No, I haven't heard about that. Oh, okay, there was. I heard something about like there was some surveillance. The, the police said this. Nobody's seen it or anything, but that supposedly he was dropped off in that same vehicle. So no, the only reason that. why Darion was arrested was because the media was so heavy on my son's house, my other son's house, that he decided to take his kids and his wife back to St. Louis because we, you know, they're from St. Louis. Right, yeah, I noticed that. Okay. My son Joe Jr. decided to take his wife and his kids back to St. Louis. When he got on the highway, he got pulled over by Texas Highway Patrol, right? Mm -hmm. Put uh, put guns up to him and had him get out the car, uh, search the car with, and see if it was Malia or Darion was in the car. They thought actually thought Darion was trying to leave town. His name is Joe too, right? Your, your other son? Yeah. Okay. Yes. They thought Darion was trying to leave town. Mm. So when, they, when they saw Darion was not in the car, they went back to the house and arrested him because they said he was a flight risk. Right, right. I heard about that. So that's why he was arrested. Mm. And then they came up with this charge uh, about some something about a corpse or something like that. Right, because they don't have um, they don't have a body or anything like that. Um, right, and then the blood that they said they found in right. the house actually, if you look at the report, it says related to Malia because it's... And although it may not be much, but it's a blessing to have. Do you wonder why sometimes you don't have that much support? I don't have time to worry about who's supporting me and who isn't. Because that's not my focus. My focus is justice for my daughter. And to find out the truth. That is my focus. What else do you want the world to know? Because the world is watching. The world has come to know Malia's story, her face. They've come to know you. They've come to form opinions. And they've come to think what they want to think about you as Malia's mother, what do you want them to know? <clears throat> I want them to know that I will not react or give energy into the criticism or the opinions of others. This is about my daughter. This isn't about anybody else. This is about Malia. 
and it should never be about nobody else. She deserves that spotlight. And don't you take that away from her. Have you have you been around Malia's belongings yet? Have you had to, you know, gather them at all if you're comfortable? You know, I know you, you said to me a couple of days ago, and I thought it was powerful, even though you thought it was weird. You said that, you know, you smelled her clothes. I did. I did smell her clothes. And I could smell her. That was the closest connection that I had with her, is her clothes. Probably don't want to let that stuff go. I don't. I don't want to let it go. And I don't think I'll ever be ready to let that go. You know, and lastly, I just want to ask you, Brittany, to tell everyone something that we didn't know about you and Malia's relationship, or even just Malia. So we all know she's gorgeous, she's smiling, she smiled after a tough brain surgery, she she had the spirit of just a princess, but what, what else can you say about her? Malia was very nurturing. I mean, very. She always wanted to make sure that you were okay or if you needed her. I mean, it's like I know she was a child, but it was almost like she had an old soul, you know? Warning. Um, you know, we've seen too much loss of life, especially with children. Cameron, Malia, Jasmine, uh, just too many, and that's just to name a few. And so this is simply unacceptable. As a community, we can't accept it. Other horrifying source, Sheriff Ed Gonzalez listing the names of some of the murdered children in the Houston area, Cameron, Malia, Jasmine, and now Ivory West. The two-year-old was shot to death in a robbery that also injured his father and a family friend. This happened at the apartments in Spring late last night. ABC 13 reporter Courtney Fisher live now in North Harris County. Deputies telling us the gunman intended to kill the little boy. Courtney. Art, the more details we learn from the sheriff, the more we realize this whole story is unconscionable. I want to show you the garage, the apartment building where it happened. The two-year-old boy was actually standing furthest, deepest in that garage. His father and the father's friend were standing by the door where those stuffed animals were placed not too long ago. Half in the street, they were half in the garage. The sheriff says the killer likely shot the two adults first, then went into the garage, pointed the gun at little Ivory West Jr., and pulled the trigger. The father is in critical condition, the friend is stable, and Ivory West Jr. is dead. That's a child who's innocent, a child who loves life, a child who loves his parents, a child who loves to play. Ivory West Jr. was two years old, smiling, trusting, happy. Last night, a man decided to kill him. Why kill a two-year-old inside the house? Possibly three people could have ended up dead. Ivory, his 38-year-old father and father's friend, were all shot in the family's garage. The father was flown to Memorial Hermann. He was hit nearly 10 times. The friend shot in the foot. I was terrified, honestly, for them, scared for them. Tanika Martinez lives in the apartment above the garage. She says she heard fireworks before gunshots. Investigators believe that was the shooter trying to confuse potential witnesses. Then, screaming from Ivory's mother. That's not something you want to wake up to. Who was in her apartment with her two-month-old baby. Later, wearing a change of clothes from detectives, she told them when she ran outside to see what had happened, she found two men in the garage. One of them had a gun. He pointed it at her and yelled he wanted money. Ivory's mother said she didn't have any. The two men ran. All the mayhem that went on, at the end of the day, it seems like they 
made off with nothing. We're living in a time where everybody's kind of just doing what they want. Pastor Lee Skinner got the call in the middle of the night and came to the complex to support Ivory's dazed mother and a grieving family. Well, this is a mother now who's going to have to live with this. This is going to be a father who's going to have to live with this for, for the rest of their life. We have a strong description of the two suspects. That doesn't always happen. Deputies say they are both black men between 25 and 35 years old. They're tall, about 5'10 to 6 feet tall. One of them was wearing all black, a black hat, a black sweatshirt, black pants, and gold Nike was written across the front of his sweatshirt. The other one was wearing a red baseball cap and a gray T-shirt. By the way, they took off running east towards Aldean Westfield. The sheriff says anyone who lives around there, he asks that you you check your surveillance cameras right now they're looking for any video evidence of a possible suspect if you see anything that looks strange that happened around 11 30 last night contact the sheriff's office for now reporting live in the spring area courtney fisher abc 13 eyewitness news